PT when I'm piecing my pants. PT, PT when I'm piecing my suck my dick, nigga. Y'all look up at me. Get a bitch that can fuck with me. Welcome back to the Radio Show, the number one college radio station all over New York City. We chose to that cab. We had to bring her out. We got K Fendi in the building. How's it going? How's life? How's everything right now? Everything's fine. We doing life's good, you know. Just chilling. Alright, so take me back from the beginning. What made you want to become a rapper? Tell me the full story, K Fendi. Well <laughs> I've been rapping for about like two, two and a half, three years now. Mm. Um I started rapping in the staircase of my of Sheep's FA. I started rapping in the staircase with my friend. We just we was in there just freestyling. He was like, Oh nah, this fire, you gotta you gotta write it. And then one of my older homies, he had told me, like, I'm gonna take you to the stool and we're gonna see what's up. I recorded my first song and it kind of like, on SoundCloud, it was doing like good amount of views. Everybody was liking it. And from then on, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this by myself. I think I'm gonna go somewhere. So when you first started, was it like on the drill type of time or? You... Yeah. I'm, I was like the first girl drill rapper. I mm. personally believe that I was the first female yeah. drill rapper in New York. In New York, okay, so you feeling that? Do you feel like right now? I feel like the female drill is like pushing heavy, and, I, and you know, you starting it. You yeah. saying like how you see it, how it grew. How do you feel like how it grew right now? Um, I feel like <clears throat> a lot of females. I'm not saying I'm not a lot of females. They have their own taste. They do their own thing. But me personally, I feel like if I was more consistent, I would have been at the top of a lot of people. And a lot of people need to like, you know, just pay their homage and know who they was listening to at first, you know. Mm-hmm. Also, um, it's just a lot. It's a lot of females. It's a lot of females right now, and it wasn't when I started. Yeah, That's, I know. I feel like, so how do you feel with all these, like, feel like rappers coming out of everywhere? You see the bras, Brooklyn, Queens, like. I was just it? like, oh, she rap now? Okay, cool. Kudos to you. Like, do your thing. Everybody going to. Get to their place, and then when it's time, it's time. Do you yeah. think there's too too many of them? No. Mm-hmm. I feel like everybody just knows who they think. If mm-hmm. you feel like that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, so how do you nobody. how do you stick out? How do why people should be tuned into you? I feel like I stick out because a lot of people know that I did it first. Like that's mostly why I have my name, and I'm gonna keep it book. But my music personally was not like. How every other female rapper raps. Like, I don't rap like I'm from the Bronx. I don't rap like I'm just. Can I curse? Yeah. I don't rap like I'm just dick around people. Like, I just. If I get my flow, I'm gonna get my flow. It could be one way this time and one way this time. Mm-hmm. And that's that. That's why I'm different. And you being in the beginning, right? Do you feel like some of these female rappers copied you? Copied your flow? Copied what you're saying? Yeah. Like, probably like two. But after a while, they started getting their own flow and stuff. But it's just like, I know you've seen me. I know you've seen me. And, you know, from the beginning to now, you know, those two two years, how do you stay consistent to, like, stay relevant, stay on top? Me, personally, I'm not a consistent person. I know that. I know I'm not consistent at all. When one minute, I'm dropping the video. And then the next minute, I'm just like, can y'all just leave me alone? Oh, I don't want to do this right now. So that's my problem, and I understand that totally. But... Once I get back, like now, personally, I feel like I'm back and where I need to be, and I'm going to push harder to get where I was before. So, um, you know, once I get my consistency back, it's going to be a lot of pressure. Why do you feel things. like now is the time for you to come back and everything? Because I'm losing myself. Like, I'm losing what I know. I have my own certain clout. You know I me? Mean? I'm not, not a lot of people know me, you know, but there's a certain amount of people that do know me, and I feel like my clout is not where it used to be and that's not something that I want for myself. How I'm gonna get recognized if I'm going down. You're supposed to go up, you feel me? Yeah. Any drill rappers you tuned in with? Like Ari? Like artist wise. Yeah. Um my my friends and she said hey, um Kento Hound, Blue C T V, um there's a lot of them. Raymond Cardi. There's a lot of them. So okay. So being if from, I didn't say your name, I'm sorry, but there is a lot of them, and I'm cool with them. Um, no, no, no. Which drill rappers you tuned in with? So um, you say you being from Sheets Head Bay, Brooklyn. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people know about Sheets Head Bay from the beginning mm-hmm. with with Rax. You mm-hmm. know, we know the you had a relation like with him, with the music wise and everything. And I know you guys, you spoke off camera that you guys are mm-hmm. not cool. So like, oh, people want to know like what happened between you and Rax. 
especially because both of you guys have mutual friends uh-huh. and everything. I personally, mm, the type of people that I like to be around is like, <laughs> the type of people I like to be around is people that is going to support me in any way, like, not put their self, like, everybody's going to put their self above people, cool, because everybody has their own problems, everybody has their own things to deal with, but me, you got to be, like, cool, like, you got to just, you just got to be not what he's doing right now, like, okay. I, I, he's doing what he got to do, for me, his music is going out of here and stuff like that, but it's, like, a lot of people could tell him stuff. And me personally, you cannot tell me to do this and I'm going to do that. I feel like I don't want to do that. But if somebody tell him, like, go do that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not going to, I'm not going to, it's no backlash. going to end if he gets backlash, backlash. If there's backlash, it's not. It's everybody's fault but his own. That's how I personally feel. That's oh, okay. what I'm saying. If that makes sense. So you don't feel like, do you feel like he doesn't support Sheep's Head Bay artists? Like- no, I feel like he doesn't support Sheep's Head Bay artists. Oh. Not, like, he want to be cool and all that and all that, but that's cool. But me personally, I don't think so. Okay. And how was life growing up in Sheets at Bay? Um, I lived out there for, I believe, four years. I believe it was four years. I, I didn't grow up out there. I'm, I'm originally from all over. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I lived in Sheets at Bay for about four, five years. And then I started coming outside. And I started meeting people. And they, you know, just started growing a family. Oh, okay. Together. So who was that? First person you met, she's had they. The first person I met. Yeah, like. I, I think my first friend was. I don't know. I think yeah. I kind of just met, started meeting people all at the same time. I had a neighbor though. My neighbor, he's really cool. Um, we was always hanging out before I really met anybody else. So he's a rapper too. His oh. name's Chadi Allen. So right. That's about it. You know, my friends, who we got right next to you? This is my lady. This is my name. This is my manager. That's right. All right. So, I want to know what's the funny story you guys have together. You just the call ride. The car ride on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. The car ride. Every day is a funny story with y'all? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And my how did you? how did that relationship be, become when they, they become your manager? Like, she became your manager and everything. I just, I'm always around her. This, yeah. this is my cousin in the world. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, so, um, yeah. She go on she go my cousin, feel me? So, just tapped in with her. She's, yeah, she's always around. So, I seen, like, she was doing, she has her own artist besides me. So, I'm like, nah, she's actually pretty cool at this manager and stuff. So, it wasn't, like, official. We was just, yeah, was can just you do this for yeah, me? Can you do that for me? And then, after a while, I'm just like, girl, I'm going to put you in my bio because you're doing all this stuff already. So, uh, like, this makes sense. Right. So, right now, you know, 2022, we're in a, and towards the end of the summer, mm-hmm. you know, what you got next? Like, what's, what can people be tuned in for you? I got a couple of videos that I'm about to start shooting, a lot more videos, a lot more freestyles. Like, I'm going to go to the studio, and I'm going to have just start recording me, and I'm thinking about starting some vlogs in um, Sheep's Head Bay, just walking around, telling people about my daily life and all that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm about to be back on my shit, so. How does adding extra content like that, vlogs, stu- maybe studio vlogs and studio sessions like that, affect your rap career? You know, adding more content, what does that help you? Um, and it helps me with people recognizing me. So people in, like on my Instagram, like you know the pages and stuff like that, just the fan pages and stuff. Mm-hmm. They'll tell me like, where are you? Like, what are you doing? Like, your music is too fire for you not to be doing anything right now. So I'm like, you know what? You're right. So let me just start recording back in and doing more than I was doing before, all of that. What happened to me, I started relying on other people instead of me relying on myself. So when I was doing everything by myself, when I was going to the stool and I was um, like every day, every week and just making music and telling people like, I wanna shoot this, this, that, that, I was doing that on myself. Then I started relying on people saying like, oh, you're gonna do this for me, right? All right, so when are we doing this? After a while, stuff started fading and people started Focusing on what who they really wanted to focus on and just started leaving me out the picture, which started making me lazy. I can't blame nobody but myself. But I, at the end of the day, as a family, I felt like we should have all been together as a family and not pick and choose uh-huh. who we want to put more time into. Oh, uh, so do you feel like that was like the hardest lesson you learned during the home music? I do. I feel like no one's going to tell you this, but like 
you got to just do what you got to do by yourself. You can't be relying on nobody. Cause do you feel like these like engineers and producers choose favorites or pick? Of course. I've seen more. <laughs> I've seen so many producers like, what are you doing? I put you onto this producer, so why is it that I can't get a studio session no more because you always in it for free? <laughs> like, beat makers, they'll give a, a, a beat to a, a higher up artist, right? Somebody like... I don't know. I don't want to name no names. So they'll give a um, they'll give a um, a beat to a higher up artist, right? You ask them for a beat, they like okay, fifty dollars. Okay, cool. I'm gonna pay you. It's your beat, but it's like my man just told me that you just gave him a beat the other day for what he did. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's certain thing like that. But I have my perks too, as me. I have my own perks. Like okay, some people will give me stuff. Some people will would not and it's just like alright I'm not at the top yet so it's been like producing how would you describe a K funny type beat? Fast. It has to be fast. My producer though. Mars Fast, he's a really good producer. He know like I need my beats very fast. Mm-hmm. I just started getting onto the Jersey wave, but I need my beats to be like it gotta be a fast tempo. The beat gotta be hard, like it has to I have to feel it in my chest. Like I have to feel a beat. If not then I'm not gonna jack. I can really I can make music on one beat, and then later on, I'm going to just switch the lyrics to another beat because I'm not feeling this beat no more. Okay. And when you listen to the beats and write, write to songs, mm-hmm. are you in the, would you prefer to be in the house, like in the headphones, or you want to be in the studio with the loudspeakers? Um, I have wrote in, written, I have written songs on a, like before, like two years ago, three years ago, excuse me, before, my feeling hot song, I wrote that on a train. I wrote it on the train on my way to the studio in like 20 minutes, right? So I feel like I prefer to be, you have to rush me like, we need this right now. We need this right now. So, all right, y'all going to get the best song y'all can in 30 minutes. So I feel like anywhere, anywhere is good enough. Was that the shortest time you ever wrote in a song? 20 minutes? Or was it I was going to True Boy Studio for a little minute. And oh, sounds, I forgot his name. I'm sorry, but I forgot his name. He used to make beats for me on the spot. Like, he used to just make beats for me, like, yo, okay, you gotta do this. I used to just finish it, go in the hallway in just five minutes, mm, and then go in there and finish what I had. If I didn't finish, I'm gonna finish it on the mic and start freestyling and all that. Okay. So, I feel like the fastest I wrote a song is actually five minutes. That's impressive. A lot of people mm-hmm. can't. A lot of people take like hours or even, yeah, days yes. to write one song. So, speaking about studio sessions, like, what, how's the studio session vibe for you? Because would you want to take the lights off? Do you, do you want everyone to be there? Or do you want only you and okay. your, just your manager? If it's, if it's a, if there's a booth in the studio, I don't have nothing against the studio with no booths. But if there's a booth in the studio, everybody could come vibe out and watch me do what I got to do, you feel me? But if there's no booth, I can't, I don't like people watching me. Like, y'all watching me? Like, am I messing up? Like, y'all don't like what I'm saying? Yo, why y'all looking at me? And then I start getting nervous, and I'm telling Bruce, like, I can't do this right now. Um, y'all got to wait for something. Like. Mm. So I think I prefer it better. Like, it depends on if it's a booth or not. What was the longest studio session you had? I believe 12 hours. 12 hours? Mm-hmm. And how do you stay awake? Because I want to know how like, you guys stay locked in for 12 I hours. Was, I think I was asleep for, like, two hours. And another other because, t- No, because there was other people there. So oh. when it wasn't my turn, I think I was asleep, but... Other than that, we was up. I think I had six hours on the session. Um, we was up and we was working, drinking Red Bull, and call it a day. And when you're in a booth, like, and you have your friends, everyone there, mm-hmm. do, do you accept criticism? Do you want people to tell you, like, oh, I'm not jacking out? Yeah, you? I do. I feel like if y'all not jacking it, why would the whole world? Why would the whole world? They gonna be like, nah, she, what is she talking about right now? Mm-hmm. So if they tell me it don't make sense, then I'm gonna be like, okay, I believe that. But if I'm feeling it, like, I'm like, no, I'm going to say this, then I'm going to say this. Like, mm-hmm. I took me too long to get this far. Y'all not about to tell me change it. Right. And that's what, speaking with, like, the fans, like, mm-hmm. you know, people that don't want to, that just hate for no reason mm-hmm. and stuff like that. How do you feel when you started rapping and the people that wasn't supporting you now, they see what you're trying, what you're doing, and now coming back around, trying to support you now? Um, Personally, I feel like they just dick riders. Like, I see them do it to other people, and I see them do it to me. I don't, I'm the type of person, like, I love my fans, because I have fans that's been with me since the first time I started rapping, they like, oh, nah, she's fired, whatever, but then I have people that's just, like, they follow me to unfollow me, then they follow me back when I drop something, and then they go unfollow me, and they follow me back, like, do y'all like me or not, so, it's okay. just, like, I really 
I really don't care, but it's just like, what do y'all make up y'all mind? Right. And speaking about that, what's the weirdest or funniest fan interaction you had? Could interaction in person or like? In person or what was the weirdest thing someone said to you in your DMs? I am on the face of Jesus, St. Mary. Uh, can I show y'all? <laughs> Hold on, I want to show y'all. They made an intern page of me, right? And they put me on the face of um, St. Mary. Oh, they just... <laughs> okay, I get it now. They put me on the face of St. Mary. And when you saw that, what did you, what was your first reaction? I'm like, um, this me? Like, what? <laughs> what are y'all doing? Look at another one. I'm gonna block their faces out because <laughs> that's beef I don't want. They put two girls at the bottom of this one and put me at the top, trying to say that like I'm I'm above those females. For me, I don't want to be. I don't want to sit here and beef with every female that rap. I don't want to do that. I got my little one to twos because some of y'all bitches, yeah. I got my little ones and twos, but every bitch, I don't want to sit here and beef with you, girl. Let's make a song. What are you doing? Do you feel like they call you out just to, you know, get a reaction or a clout? Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like that. I feel like a lot of them, they start talking about Dior. They start talking about this, that, that. They're like, girl, you're a girl. You need to stay in your place. Me, personally, I'm not smoking on nobody. And I have ops, feel me? But it's like, what do I look like sitting there smoking on somebody I don't know? Y'all do not know this man. And for people that do know him, y'all sitting there smoking on him, but y'all was just with him. Probably in his bed, laid up with him. You understand? And shit like that. This shit like that. It's just like, mm -hmm. what y'all doing, bro? And speaking about with Brooklyn and all these, mm -hmm. you know, and female drivers, are you are you cool with any with the 4 1 members or not? 4 1? Um, I knew a couple of them before they were together. Like, I knew a few of them. I knew Kyle and um, Jerry, but that was probably like two years ago. That's probably the year, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know more because I. Uh, I don't keep in contact with them. Like, I haven't kept in contact with them for a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, spoke earlier about you said got a couple videos. So, what's the next single? What's the next video? Can we see from Kate Fendi? I'm gonna shoot a video, shoot a video Friday, mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. I know y'all miss me. So, I don't know if they're gonna see the video by the time this is out. But by the time this is out, it should be a video coming or it should be a video out for me. So just look out for that soon. Well, you know what the song is for the video? No. You just not yet. <laughs> well, I'm gonna feel it. I'm gonna feel it. I'll probably shoot it in the studio or something. Probably right. make a song. You know shoot. who's gonna shoot it? Um, probably Seth Made, most oh, likely. Okay. Seth Made, or um, probably try to get somebody else. Mm. If, okay. not, if he's not available. He's pretty, he's a good cameraman. He's coming up too. Right. And how do you decide what songs you wanna be put out, what songs you wanna keep? I listen to my music like, like there's no other artist out there. So if I just made three songs, I'm gonna sit there and listen to it until I get tired of it. And once I get tired of it, it's like, mm, on to the next. And then I'm going to feel which one I don't, which one I like the most. And whichever one I like the least, y'all not going to hear it. Y'all okay. not going to hear it from me at all. Okay. Are you trying? Are you going to try to type into different types beats or are you going to stick with the drill slash jersey um, club? I'm, I feel like I could do any other, any type of beat, but I'm trying to challenge myself to slow beats because... I can't really rap on slow beats anymore, like I ha like I used to, and I feel like it's because the Jersey era, everything. I have to, it's my brain, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to get on the slow beats mm -hmm. soon. I'll make a singing song or something. I tried it before, I didn't like it. Oh, okay. You you don't even be like melodic singing no more. Nah, I don't think I don't think so because my voice, <laughs> my voice. I feel like my voice is for drill, even mm -hmm. though it's a genre, It's like it's not gonna last in music. I oh. still feel like um. I can still make drill last. All right, so I want to know your opinion about drill. You know, do, do you feel like this and and everything affects like how labels look at you guys? Labels see any opportunity? Because I, I heard that like labels don't look look at drill rappers and don't take it because of the risk and you know of a drill rapper. Well, if any label looking at me, I can tell them they don't got to worry about all that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, personally. With the drill and the labels and all that, I've seen a lot of drill rappers actually getting signed, like Shy Kid, all of them. They getting signed. They making part of drill and me. Like, you know what I mean? They talking about stuff that I don't talk about. You understand? So it's like I'm pretty sure labels they gonna sign them just off the shit that they know they can make some money off of. Mm -hmm. 
mm. because I I personally feel like labels mm. they see people in the in the projects and people with low income and stuff like that and they're like okay he don't know that much about this music stuff so we're gonna take him and we're gonna give him this 360 deal and later on he he gonna get his money at first but down the line those 360 deals got you looking at yourself like why just wait for something better and you like the way that you say articulated with the whole mm-hmm. music business like how what does it take for you to sign what would it take for me to sign yeah because you you already knew you kind of know what's what's going on yeah i ain't gonna lie. I, I i gotta look at that contract like i don't know once one label looks into you i feel like you could get so many more labels to actually look into you because it's like, y'all want me, so what's to say that these people not going to want me too? They just don't know of me yet. So the first deal that comes to my face, I probably won't take it. Because I feel like there's going to be more people down the line that's going to take me. Like, half a mil? I don't think I'll sign for half a mil. I think i saw for a mil or better. But that's just me. Because I feel like I, I, I'm worth that, you understand? I just see females sign for way more. So, I don't know. Probably like... A, Three quarters of a male song, something like that. Right. And with, are you using rap to venture off to different businesses? Or are you just not just focused on music? Or do you want to tap into like, let's say, the fashion industry that like some of these rappers have done, or anything else? Um, I I like to multitask, so I have a lot of talents. It's not just um music, but with me being in the streets, like how I am, my name for myself, I personally feel like I cannot do all of that until I'm grown up a little until okay. I've grown out of here a little more. Okay. So what's the talent that no that you have that no one knows or really? I could cook. Like I could cook my ass off. Like I could cook like my friends are buy food. Like they'll go to the grocery store and buy the meat, whatever they want. And they're like, Can you cook this for me? I'm like, girl, I'm like cooking. Like what are you they're like, yeah. What's her best meal that she ever cooked? I'm gonna have it for me yet. Yeah. They haven't had food for me yet. What do you think is the best dish that you have? That I've made, I don't know. Yesterday I made some, I made macaroni pie. It was so good, but I don't think that was the best meal. I just I feel like all my meals are really good. They are. All right. <laughs> but and more about the future. What's one thing you want to do? You know, with your group of friends that you haven't done. In the future, I'm gonna island hop. I wanna island hop. I wanna go to different islands and just hop on a private jet over and over. Okay, and that's when you you know filming when you're up there. Up, music, up, yeah. Like the whole sign. Do you mm-hmm. feel like you're obligated to bring everyone that you know with you? Because I know a lot of rappers faced out mm-hmm. ultimatum where they feel like they have to bring everyone they friends with up, and that causes drift, rift, yeah. and everything. I feel like I don't have to, but I know me, and I'm a very like I'm too nice, so I know it's like come on y'all, let's just come on, just bring it on. <laughs> All right, and then my last question, more about the future. What type of legacy do you want to have with the name Kay Fendi? You know, when people bring up She Said Bay or rappers in the mm-hmm. future, like she I did want, that. I want everybody to. I want everybody to know that, like this girl, this girl from She Said Bay, really set a trend for female drill rappers. Like, not to be cocky or anything, but it backs a lot of people. A lot of females in Brooklyn was not rapping in 2020, 2019. It was, it was none of that. People was looking at me like. But you don't, why you sing or something? Go sing a song. Like, what you doing? Like, no, I like this genre. I think I'm mm-hmm. for it. All right. And then what do you want to say to the supporters before we head out, everyone that supported you from the beginning? Um, Thank you, everybody that's actually been here from the beginning and, you, you know, seeing me grow and seeing me disappear and come back and disappear. I really appreciate everybody that's still following me to this day and everything. Thank y'all mm-hmm. so much. And where people can find you on Instagram, YouTube. K Fendi with two underscores. My YouTube is K Fendi. Um, I don't, yeah, that's all my social media. That's all I mean. Thank you for coming through. No problem.